6.2 and a six foot sophomore gunslinger. The Central Rebels, uh, you heard the coaches talk about it. They basically have four guards, and then Harlow is the guy that mixes it up deep. He's a 6'3 senior. Tyler Stewart goes 6'2", a sophomore. Brandon Wagner, a 6'2", junior. Jake Bridges, a 5'10", senior. And Connor Proffer is a 6'2", senior. National Anthem now. Tip off in a moment. New ownership at Lenny's in Lesterville reminds you to stop by for lunch. They've got your favorite lunch specials and a variety of your favorite sandwiches. Lenny's would also like to invite you to try their new winter menu of delicious subs and hot soups. The new owners of Lenny's in Lesterville also takes this time to wish the Lesterville Bearcats good luck this basketball season. Lenny's on the corner of Highway 21 and Piola Road. When you have a concrete job, Polite Ready Mix is the name to remember. Polite Ready Mix has been in business for three decades, and they're locally owned and operated, with eight locations servicing Washington, Iron, St. Francis, and now Reynolds and Carter counties. And in addition to their already great service, Polite Ready Mix offers several trucks and a concrete conveyor. Contact the Polite Ready Mix nearest you for a no-obligation estimate today. That's Polite Ready Mix. Walmart Supercenter in Farmington is the place to go for the best prices on all your seasonal items. You'll find a large selection of items for your vacation to that fabulous wedding, to decorating for special occasions. The friendly staff at Walmart Supercenter in Farmington are to help you find whatever you need, when you need them. Walmart Supercenter in Farmington, your all-occasion connection. That's Walmart Supercenter in Farmington. Save money, live better. Walmart. The Potosi R3 School District is committed to excellence. Now, they're proud of their students and their athletes because these young people work hard and show a ton of dedication. The Potosi R3 students and athletes are committed to excelling to high levels of achievement. Attitude and perseverance play a big part in their success. The Potosi R3 School District sincerely hopes this school year is a wonderful and memorable stepping stone in their life's journey. the T.J. Fulon Fieldhouse, our boys' championship game. Upcoming, they're introducing the starters on the floor right now, and that gives us a chance to thank just a few sponsors. Our tip-off is brought to us tonight, courtesy of uh, Crown Collision. Crown Collision Center at Crown Motors where customers bring their friends. Highway 67, north of Farmington. North County will be in their gray uniforms. They've got blue and gold stripes on their shoulders, their sleeves, and down the side of their shorts. They've got blue numbers and letters with a gold outline. The Central Rebels will run in their white uniforms. Home standing top seed. They've got red and white, or they've got red and blue stripes down the side. Blue numbers and letters with a red stencil on the numbers. They've got red letters with a blue stencil there. Central Rebels undefeated in the year 9-0. They have beat Missouri Military Academy, St. James, Sullivan, Crystal City. They've beaten St. Pius, DeSoto, Herculaneum, Crystal City again, and Farmington. Their closest game all year was in the semifinal against Farmington. They won that by just three outside of that ball game. Nobody's been within double digits of them. The North County Raiders, well, they have lost two, but they've already, they've lost three, but they've avenged two of them. Sullivan, uh, they lost two in their second game. They lost to North County and Perryville, but they beat those two teams on the way to this championship. We're ready to go. Brett Spradling jumps it up for North County, and it'll be Connor Proffer for the Rebels. Central moving left to right as I look at and describe the action to you. North County right to left. Aaron Argus has our video online at mimoinfo.com, J98 Web TV. Evan Thurman 
Engineering operating our game back in the studio. So it moves the tap, and we're underway for the boys' championship. The final line to be filled at the Bob Seacrest Jr. Central Christmas Tournament. Central works with it in the half court. Jake Bridges pump fake on a three. Slips it right side. It's Wagner, and Wagner rattles home his first shot of the game. The first shot of the game, and it's a 3-0 lead for the Central Rebels. Half a minute in. Here come the Raiders, their first chance at it. Sprinkles got it on the right wing, extends 30 feet out. He'll pull the trigger from there, and I'm not kidding. Now he goes to Bonnie, back cut, left elbow. Over to the right wing, this is Johnson. Hunter will step outside, 6'3 and 250. Plays it underneath to McGraw. McGraw looking for a backhanded bouncer intended for his teammate Spradling, but it's intercepted by Wagner. Now Wagner goes to the left corner. He airmails the three-point shot. Sprinkle has the backside rebound. He's putting it up the floor. Working in the half-court set now. Crossover dribble gets to his left hand and fires down to the left corner. Johnson, a covered up triple. <laughs> yes, sir. Hunter Johnson goes hunting for that three, and it got it. It's a bullseye. We're tied at three. Bridges works out front with Proffer. Proffer head of the circle, left wing Bridges down to the left corner, Harlow. And now it's Proffer, a triple. Burn the net tonight. A minute and a half in. Connor Proffer trips the trigger on a triple. 6-3, everything from three so far. Left wing, this is McGraw. McGraw works up to the head of the circle, Bonnie. Bonnie to Johnson, Johnson on the right wing, Sprinkle. Fumbled with it, regains, drives in, stops, pops, got it to go. It's not a three-point shot, but a chance for a three-point play, and Sprinkles going to the line. And here we go again. Here we go, huh? Buckle up, right? 6-15 on this first quarter clock. Hayden Sprinkle to the stripe. <laughs> There's a foul from Wagner. Greg Owen Brewster back with me. He'll have our halftime show as a chat with Josh Mapes, victorious head coach for the Central Girls and also runner-up Scott Davis, coach for the Fredericktown Lady Cats. Sprinkle connects on the three-point play and we're tied at six. So two triples for Central, a third one on the way. This one rims all the way around and pops back out for Proffer. Two minutes gone, Sprinkle crosses the timeline. And puts it in the left hand. Pitches to Bonnie, left wing. Bonnie dribbling out near half court. Sprinkle runs all the way around the offense from the baseline and pops out on the right wing, drives it here. Sprinkle with a runner. Nifty shot by Hayden Sprinkle. He's ready to go out of the gate. He's got five. And now it's a crazy out of control shot that time by Bridges. Reversed it. Wouldn't go high off the window. Rebound and tap try by Harlow. No. But now the outlet pass stolen by Proffer. He's going. Four, misses the layup and two players crashing for the rebound. Foul's going to go against one of them. It'll be either Wagner or Bonnie. Those were the two that collided. They both ended up on the floor. Oh, they're going to go ahead and tag Adam McGraw with this one. Maybe he was in charge of putting both of them to the, the, the deck. I don't know. It's an 8-6 lead for North County. Sprinkle started out well. And now here's a three off the inbound. The shot won't fall, but a foul on the play. And Tyler Stewart will go to the free throw line to shoot three shots. Stewart's the sophomore in this lineup, but the kid's not timid. There aren't many shots that he's seen that he doesn't like. They're all gunners. He tied for the scoring lead yesterday mm -hmm. with 15. That's right. The number on his jersey. Misses the free throw, though. The foul that time went against Bonnie. That's his first. Now, even though Stewart misses the first, he can still tie the game. He's got two shots left. Got fouled in the second, though. A 75% foul shooter on the season. Averages 13.6. This is a ball club that has four players averaging in double figures. Bridges, the leader, with 18. Wagner at 17.8. And Stewart goes one out of three and makes it a one-point game. Boy, great crowd on hand for this one. Yeah, terrific. Standing room only here at the T.J. Fulon Fieldhouse. The pass is to Hunter Johnson. Took his eyes off of it. and It ends up in Jimmy Palmer's lap over on the sideline. So 8-7. The Raiders lead the Rebels. 5-18. Remaining in this first quarter. Now, Central, the top seed, undefeated, ranked in the state. They're the favorite. But the Raiders don't care about that. They've already lost twice to a couple of teams that they ended up turning around and beating in this tournament. So whether you're the favorite, whether you've beat them before, they're not interested. They said play ball. Jumper missed. And now here's a drive by McGraw. McGraw trying to back down. Muscles up. Can't spin it in. 
And the rebound taken off the rim by Stewart. Stewart, outlet pass Bridges. Bridges had longer hair in football, but it's just long enough on the basketball court. When he runs down the floor, it waves in the wind. Two, six, two, six, two. The shortest guy is Bridges. Johnson with the foul. Stewart to the line looking for the three point play. Four from the foul line. Guards but rangy guards. Sprinkles about six foot. He put on a few inches over the last few years. A 9 8 lead for Central. Here's McGraw. McGraw driving, kicking to left corner. Johnson thought about the triple, turned it down, fires it down underneath now, and then they'll curl it out to McGraw. McGraw driving, kicks to the left corner. Johnson again. Ha ha! Hunter Johnson going to work. Bang, bang from the left corner. Sweet stroke from the near corner. An 11 9 lead for North County. This is a team that believes in itself right now. Here's Bridges now. Bridges over on the left wing. That's to Proffer. Down to the left corner. They work to Harlow. And now a drive by Bridges. Bridges goes over to the top of the defense. Misses the runner. Harlow with the backside board. And that shot won't fall. Right there, three gray shirts for the rebound. Outlet pass. Sprinkle. McGraw. Left side. Count the shot and he's fouled. Oh, mercy. He power cleaned that thing in. And are they going to take it away from him? Do they call a foul? what they do? No points went on the board. No fouls called. It's unclear what happened there. I still don't know what happened. Yeah, you've got me on that one. Did they call a travel that I didn't had see it? To that had to have been what happened. Was, I thought okay. it was gonna I thought it was going to be and thought it should have been an end one. Now to the right wing. Proffer looking to tie it up. Goes over the top of Johnson. That's five for Proffer. We're tied at eleven. Boy, McGraw got walloped when he went in there last time. Sprinkle left corner three. Not this time. Johnson chases down the rebound in the corner. Now it's on the deck. Now it's tapped out of bounds. And Johnson gets called for a foul while he's laying on the floor. Boy, have been two kind of curious possessions, and that's the second personal on Hunter Johnson. The crowd is dictating a certain environment, and this game is going to get... Chippy, to say the least. <laughs> we'll see. Chase Carolyn checks in. 5'10 junior Johnson checks out. Three minutes to go. First frame, we're tied at 11. Great competition so far. Here's Jake Bridges, pitches at right wing. That's to Wagner. Wagner back to Bridges. Bridges three feet outside of the arc, rattled it in and out. And right there for the rebound, I think it was Tyler Stewart that went over the back. It was. His first personal. 252 remaining in the first. We're tied at 11. And all St. Francis County Final Four. Farmington claimed third place by defeating West County earlier. And now it's North County and Central here for the title. Central girls already won. No school has ever performed back to back sweeps of the titles in boys and girls. Central can accomplish that here tonight if they win. And a little nudge as Sprinkle tried to chisel his way up past the first line of defense. And Proffer nudged him. Checking in, Nathan Davenport for the Raiders. Sprinkle calls for it, gets it. He's on the right wing. Now plays it to McGraw. McGraw. Muffler and Auto in Park Hills is family owned and operated, so just like family, they know your dollar counts. When you need good, honest work at a good, honest price, see Moyers Muffler and Auto, and not only for mufflers, but inspections, oil changes, brakes, complete exhaust, new tires, AC work, and more. And now you can take your vehicle for all of its alignment needs. That's Moyers Muffler and Auto at 502 East Main Street in Park Hills, 431-5428. Backhand and wraparound pass. Spradling couldn't hit it from the right low block. 13-11, North County on top. Central with the basketball. A drive by Proffer, left baseline. Sprinkle tapped it, Bridges tapped it, dives out of bounds, Sprinkle steals it. Sprinkle driving it one on two, rolls it up, rolls it in! 
Hayden Sprinkles got seven. <laughs> With a little fun in the boot tonight. <laughs> this is good stuff. 15 11, a four point lead for the North County Raiders. Minute 20 remaining in the first frame. Kick it out front. This is Stewart. Stewart slashes in off balance, throws it up, missed it. Rebound to Harlow. Harlow splits a triple team and muscles it in. Drew Harlow's got his first pair. 15-13, a two-point advantage for North County. Less than a minute to go, first quarter. Far side line, Spradling, and a nice timeout by Jimmy Palmer. That was gonna be 10 seconds, I think, against his team in the backcourt. Jimmy Palmer says, well, let's stop the clock, talk it over. 53 seconds left, first quarter, and time now to thank a few of our sponsors. We'd like to thank Dietrich Mother's Shed Funeral Home in DeSoto, Quality Trigger, Transportation of Pilot Knob, Lead Bell Puppet Supply in Park Hills, the South Iron Schools, and representative Paul. We've streamed all four games for you tonight from the Central Christmas Tournament. This is our boys' championship game. And 15-13, North County leading Central. We're back from the North County timeout. They'll put it in the hands of Kyle Bonney. Bonney works it again. Wade Scherfus. Scherfus in the ball game for the first time. Scherfus and also Holden Mayberry playing the final minute along with Matt Richardson here. McGraw backing down, spinning, firing, turnaround jumper. Count it. And McGraw so good down low, knows how to box out, use his size. And now Bridges attacks right of the lane. He rises up and rims it in. Back and forth we go. 17-15. North County on top here. North County hasn't blinked. And they have stared right into the top seat in an undefeated Central Rebels. It's a play ball, huh? And North County's got the basketball here. A drive by Spradling. Gets to the middle. Stolen away. Wade Sherpas is on the run. Brings it outside. Two seconds left. Sherpas from 25 feet. He almost banked it in. 17-15. We're at the end of the first, and it's a two-point lead for North County. After second quarter, the other side of the first pause. Okay, now again. When you're ready for a great home-style meal, visit Cafe Genevieve on Highway 61 near the St. Gen Hospital in St. Genevieve. Join them for delicious family-style meals from fried chicken to hand-cut steaks, prime rib, and much more. That's Cafe Genevieve. Cafe Genevieve is very appreciative and thankful for family, friends, and patrons that support their business. So quit thinking about a great meal. Go get it. Take the short drive to Cafe Genevieve, Highway 61 in St. Gen. At Dietrich Mother's Head Funeral Home in DeSoto, the caring staff believes in providing value and trust. Every family deserves a perfect and final tribute, but making decisions in a trying time isn't easy. Alleviate that burden from your family with a prearranged funeral plan. The compassionate staff will sit down with you, discuss your needs, and listen to your concerns. Dietrich Mother's Head Funeral Home, 220 North Main in DeSoto. There for you in your time of need. Been in a little trouble and need a little extra help? Norman Crumpecker, bail bond agent from Potosi, can help. Norman Crumpecker has an answering service and is available 24-7. You'll get be out and on your way. Guaranteed. Call 573-436-9301 or 631-8161. Anytime, day or night. Call Norman Crumpecker. He can set you free. That's bail bond agent Norman Crumpecker from Potosi. The Potosi R3 School District is committed to excellence. Now, they're proud of their students and their athletes because these young people work hard and show a ton of dedication. The Potosi R3 students and athletes are committed to excelling to high levels of achievement. Attitude and perseverance play a big part in their success. The Potosi R3 School District sincerely hopes this school year is a wonderful and memorable stepping stone in their life's journey. 
Richie and Angie Warren at RNA Logging and Sawmill LLC in Annapolis is proud of their community and they proudly support events in the community they serve. RNA Logging and Sawmill in Annapolis is now buying standing timber and they cut to your specifications. You heard right. They are now buying standing timber and they cut to your specifications. That's RNA Logging LLC in Annapolis. For more information, call 573-598-3926. Drew Harlow ties the game as we start the second quarter of play. We're all nodded at 17 as Harlow nets a 17-footer. And now North County's got it back. Kyle Bonney running point over to the left wing. Sprinkle, Sprinkle goes to the left side, drives with the left hand, throws it back in. It bounces, her ball's loose. Bonnie grabs it. Bonnie to the right corner. Sprinkle, uncovered three-point shot. He fired that one just a little bit long. And now rebound to Scherfus. Scherfus pushes it up the floor. Scherfus pulls up right elbow. And that's a runner, won't go. Harlow grabs it, sails down along the baseline. Sh threw the shot up before he flew out of bounds, wouldn't go. And out of the left corner, here's McGraw. McGraw tries the triple. Ha ha! Cuts the cords. Adam McGraw's got a five. And it's a three point lead for North County. 20 to 17. 618 remaining in the first half. Left wing, Scherfus. Central going to work on the offensive side. Shervis drives, double clutches, tough shot right there. And the ball bounces out of bounds and back over to the Raiders. You, you think about improved teams from one year to the next. I don't know if there's a team that's improved as much in one month as North County. Right. Coach Palmer, that uh, last regular season game when they lost in overtime to DeSoto on their home floor, he said it really woke them up. Lost to DeSoto. Then they came back and beat them in this tournament. They got pounded by Perryville by 19 earlier this year. They beat them in this tournament. And now a drive right of the lane, a pull up by Bonnie, blocked away. Loose ball taken by Proffer. He double dribbled with it. Gonna give it back over to North County. 20 to 17. And North, North County right now just outplaying Central by just a little bit. Sprinkles got it. He's gonna put it in play. Left of the bucket along the baseline. And they'll run it. Sprinkle, trouble getting it in. Finally does, spraddling left corner. So something works again, hard against Harlow. He's ripped from behind by Proffer. Proffer glides up the floor, rises up, and rims it in. Connor Proffer's got seven. 20 to 19, one point game. The Raiders lead it by a single point. Another near steal, McGraw had a chance just instead pulls up for three and misses that one. What proffers all over the place right now. He grabbed the rebound from 10 feet out. Spins it over to Wagner on the left wing. Proffer from 25. Nope, that one won't go. Harlow, though, grabs the rebound. Follow won't fall, but he's going to the free throw line. 20 to 19. A one point advantage for North County. That foul going on Spradling. That's his first. And it'll be Harlow to the free throw line. Drew's a 50% foul shooter. He's 57% from the field. How about that? Oh, yeah. That's Holden Mayberry. He's also a 50% foul shooter. <laughs> Convenient enough. The stats just <laughs> rotate in. So Holden gets his first point, and we're tied at 20. Here's the second. Got it. And Central leads, 21 to 20. North County on top at the end of the first frame, 17-15. But a little six to three push by Central to take the lead. Central tried to bring it into the forecourt, ball tapped out off of Central. Sprinkle goes into the backcourt to call for it, and they'll fire it to him there. So 21-20. The host Rebels leading it. Sprinkle from 26 feet. I mean it. And he means it too. Hayden Sprinkle has 10 points. That's his first bomb. And traditionally with Sprinkle, the next one will be even longer. 23-21. North County on top by two. Five minutes remaining. First half. Left wing proffer to the left corner. Hey, there's Harlow again. And now to Bridges. Bridges tries the three. Rattled that one home. Jake shoots 33% out there. 24-23. Central leads. Quick steal. Wagner's got it on the backcourt. Proffer calling for it, begging for it. And Proffer 
Instead, he'll go to the free throw line and Stewart. Now he fires it outside to Proffer. Back to the head of the circle, Wagner. Wagner for three, misses this one. Harlow, rebound, put a man to the floor. Shot it up, missed it. Got his own rebound back. And then Spradling ties him up. Alternate possession will keep it with Central. Harlow mad at himself for not following that miss with a make. But Central still retains possession. 24 to 23. The Rebels also have the lead right now. Lob it into Bridges on the left wing. Bridges to the head of the circle. That's Stewart. Stewart, jab step, left side Bridges. They say that he pulled the pivot foot. Drug the toe just a little bit. Just a little. North County looks for the lead back. Two great student sections tonight. You've got the gold and blue to our right. You've got the red and blue and the white off to our left. And a quick tie-up as McGraw is tied up by Proffer. A little nudge here and there, and Paul Fitzwater breaks it up. 24-23. Alternate possession with North County. Sprinkle calls out the play. I wonder if this is the play where he shoots it from 30 feet. Aren't they all? I <laughs> guess he can do it. Four threes last night. Mike Carlos said if he's in the building, he's in range. And that's no joke. It isn't. All right, so here's Sprinkle in the backcourt. Four minutes, ten seconds on the second quarter clock. 24-23. Central leads North County. The pass to the left wing, tapped out by Wagner. Wagner kind of burst on the scene as a sophomore last year to lead the varsity in scoring. He's 17.8 points this year. He and Bridges right up there. Bridges at 18 points. And now a pass fired across to the right wing. Sprinkle to the left wing, Hubbard. Hubbard back to the right side. And now they'll enter it to McGraw. McGraw, mid post, right side. Chisels his way in. And he hammers it home again. I, you know what? I think he's better shooting it, it when he's making contact. Because most of his shots are like that. McGraw's got seven. And the lead goes back to North County, 25-24. The North County students are the Boo Birds now as the foul goes on Brett Hubbard. Great crowd on hand. It's fantastic. <laughs> it really is. Bridges is at the line. That was the seventh team foul whistled against North County. Jake shoots 88% from the line. And he cuts cords clean there. And that may have been a technical foul. It was against Brett Spradling. That is his second personal foul. And it is also a technical foul. And Jimmy Palmer says back up and be quiet. So Bridges goes back to the line. We're tied at 25. Jake sinks this one. He's got seven. And now he's got two more shots coming for the technical shots. I don't know what Spradling did. I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't I'm hear. I'm not sure. Bridges makes that one. He's got eight. This could be a huge possession for the Rebels. They live by two now, 27-25. Bridges at the line. And he misses this one. And that completely changed the foul situation, too, in favor of Central. 8-3. Yeah. 342 remaining in the first half. And Central, like you said, Greg, will be shooting the rest of the way here. And for North Gate, they've got a ways to go before they'll be shooting, other than the two-shot variety, of course. So Bridges to the left wing. It's already been a four-point possession for Central. They're hoping it'll be a six- or seven-point possession here as they lead it by two. And here's Bridges for three. It's a seven-point possession. All big Jake. 11 points for Bridges, and 30-25, to 25, Central leads it. Boy, that was a big momentum shifter. Left corner, McGraw fakes it, drives it, fires it. Got it! Oh, mercy. So good inside. Nine points for Adam McGraw. Off balance for runner floater. Snaked around the defender and got it to go off the window. Bridges snaps it off to Harlow. Harlow driving the left baseline. And now hands it to Proffer in the left corner. His three won't go. Stewart wrestles the ball away from a couple of North County players. Now Bridges floats and fires. But a foul whistled against Harlow on the rebound. It has been a physical affair. Not, I don't think, in an untoward manner. But the officials are right on top of it. 
And you know, every time that the North County crowd gets on Bridges, he makes a shot. The Central crowd gets on McGraw, he makes a shot. <laughs> you love gamers like that. Trouble getting the ball in, and Jimmy Palmer wastes another timeout because his team has trouble getting the ball across half court. 30 to 27, Central by three, 247 remaining in the first half. It's the Bob Seacrest Junior Central Christmas Tournament on J98 The Boot. We're back in 30 seconds. The entire faculty staff of the South Iron School District would like to take this time to wish the South Iron Panthers the best of luck this season. The Panthers have proven that they have what it takes to be winners both on and off of the court, and everyone at the South Iron School District is proud of one of you. Again, this basketball season to the South Iron Panthers from the entire faculty and staff at the South Iron School District. Go Panthers! Thanks to Evan Thurman. He's pulling levers and pressing buttons you can't even imagine back there. And the there. right buttons oh, at that. My goodness. There are a lot of buttons that you want to press when you sit there. Remember that old game, Merlin, that the, it lights up in different colors and you have to remember you the pattern? You have to remember the pattern, yeah. I bet Thurman's great at that game. <laughs> 247 remaining in our first half. 30 to 27. There's a cow on the floor. There is a, it, there is a cow on the floor, you're right or a person dressed as a cow. No. If that's it, it's a good disguise. Okay, full court pressure by Central here. There's Hubbard in the backcourt, fires it across to Sprinkle. They beat the clock, Sprinkle from 30. <laughs> oh, he missed it. He missed it. But he'll make one of those before we're done. I asked Jimmy Palmer, I said, has he ever taken a shot that you say, uh, uh, Hayden, that's too far away. He says, I used to say that, but not anymore. Right. <laughs> 228 remaining in the first half. Central lead, central ball, 30 to 27. Proffer on the left wing, looking for a drive. Spins back around, finds Bridges. Bridges pump fake. Now he'll slice down the middle to Harlow on the left side. Harlow works back out to Proffer on the left wing. Good movement by the Raider. Defense in this 2-3 zone. To the right corner, Wagner's got it. Wagner to the right wing, Bridges. Bridges snaps off the three, missed it long. Battle for the board, won by Spradling. That kid really goes after the ball. And then Spradling held by Wagner from behind. Second one on Wagner. And the fifth team foul whistled against Central. And North County's done a great job expecting that they have eight fouls and have really kept Central off the line. They'll fire it into McGraw. McGraw is quickly double teamed, and he works it back over to his running mate, Davenport, to the left corner. Sprinkle, airmailed a three. The good backside rebound by Spradling, but there was a foul involved. Was Spradling fouled or was he fouling? He was fouled by Stewart. That's his second. <laughs> Spradling, they blew the whistle and indicated foul, and Spradling's jaw almost fell on the floor. And the official made the motion. No, it was against them. They find Spradling on the inbound. Now they whip it around left wing. Hubbard. Hubbard steps up. Trips the trigger on a triple from 23 feet. Count them all, Brett. One, two, three. And we're tied at 30. A minute 40 remaining in the first half. This is fun on a New Year's Eve. Over to the left wing. Here we go. Central ball down to the left corner. Harlow. Harlow looking for a lane. And Alley can't find it. Bridges will slice down the middle. Throws up a runner, and he'll go to the line. Wasn't sure if they were going to call that on the shot or the floor. Called it on the shot. And the foul against Hubbard, that's his second. Man, he hit a big three moments ago. Whew. These nets are taking a beating tonight. <laughs> Here's Bridges. Got it. Jake has missed one free throw tonight in five tries. 80%, pretty good, right? It's lower than his season's average. Came in shooting 88%. 31-30, Central leads. Bridges back to the stripe. 18.2 points a game for Jake. And he gets that when he's got 13. Full court pressure by Central. And the ball tapped away. Nice looking play that time by Mayberry. Now along this near sideline. Ball's tapped out, it's off of Davenport. And Central's got it back with a two point advantage. A minute and 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Bridges, head of the circle. Central ball, 
And Bridges throws it over to Proffer, right wing, back to Bridges, left wing. Chisels in, kicks to Harlow. Left baseline jumper from 17. Missed it. Sprinkle had the rebound, and then he threw it off his teammate Davenport's head and out of bounds. That's a tough way to lose the ball now. Yeah, that's a rough go for Davenport. <laughs> it is. 65 seconds left first half. Coming up at the half, we'll hear from Josh Mapes, Central Girls coach. They were the champs. Scott Davis, Fredericktown girls runners up. Connor Proffer, bang, bang for him. Proffer's got nine. Cut the cords on a three that time, his second triple. 35-30 and a steal. We're going the other way. Richardson runs it. Oh, that thing got thrown away. Brett Spradling got up and he threw it up into the student section for North County and they liked it. 45 seconds left, first half. Here's a lob to Bridges. Bridges thought about it, turns it over. Proffer, right side, triple, wouldn't go. High rebound, nice work by Davenport. Sprinkle comes down the floor, pulls up in transition, goes to McGraw, left corner. McGraw's three won't fall. Harlow grabs the rebound. I don't know how he kept the pivot foot down, but he did. One-handed bullet up the floor. Two ricochets, and Sprinkle's got it back. Crossover by Sprinkle, up the floor. Pulls the pivot foot, no call. Hubbard, right corner, triple, missed it. Tap try, McGraw, no. Tap try, Spradling, no. He hits the floor, he's going to the line. Couple of big exchanges right there in North County. Luckily, Central comes up empty on those possessions. Some end-to-end -end runs on the open ice in that one. 13 seconds left first half. Spradlin could make it a one possession game if he dumps them both in, but he misses the first. Another chance for Spradlin. 13 ticks remaining first half. Here comes Wagner in the game. And he'll come in for Matt Richardson. We got shooters all over the place. Proffert, Wagner, Bridges to the line. Here's Spradling now. And he missed them both. Rebound taken down by Harlow. Ten seconds to go. First half. Central by five. Bridges head of the circle. Eight, seven. Bridges driving right side. Six, five. Right corner. Three, two. Wagner's three. Count it. Knock the bottom out of it. Hit it dead center. He's got six. And the Rebels go to the locker room for their largest lead of the game. An eight-point difference. 38-30. Central leading North County. Your halftime show in two minutes on the boot. Toyota Fun, Toyota Fun, Toyota Fun rocks with great big deals on a new set of wheels. Camry, Prius, RAV4 2. The holidays are back, and so is Toyota Thon. Wrap up a great year with amazing deals on a huge selection of brand new Toyotas. From now until January 4th, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2015 RAV4. Learn more at buyatoyota.com. Hurry and don't delay, we'll see you here. It all ends January 4th. It's our biggest and bestest event of the year. That's why Toyota Thon rocks. Toyota. Let's go places. APR and approved credit from Toyota Financial Services. Call 1-800-79-TOYOTA for details. Offers may vary by region. See participating dealer for details. Offers end 1-4-16. Hi, this is John Popel. Get top dollar for your trade-in and special pricing on all Toyota models. Twin Toyota at I-55 in the Herculaneum Auto Mall exit. Are you looking for a law firm who has experience and can answer your questions? Hi, I'm Bryce Seacrest, a partner in the law firm of Williams & Seacrest at Park Hills. We're a local firm and we care about our clients. Our firm has experience working with clients in estate planning, bankruptcy, social security, family court, and more. Whatever your legal needs, check us out online at williamsandsecrest.com or call us at 431-5592. That's 431-5592. The choice of an attorney is an important one and should not be based solely on advertising. Hi, this is State Representative Paul Fitzwater. I would like to wish the best of luck to all the teams in the Central Christmas Tournament. Play hard, athletes, and keep your head in the game. And remember, teamwork will take you to the winning score. I would also like to take this time to wish family, friends, and acquaintances Merry Christmas from the Fitzwater family. This is State Representative Paul Fitzwater wishing you and yours health and happiness in the upcoming year.
Walmart Supercenter in Farmington is the place to go for the best prices on all your seasonal items. You'll find a large selection of items for your vacation to that fabulous wedding. It's decorating for special occasions. The friendly staff at Walmart Supercenter in Farmington, they're ready to help you find whatever you need when you need them. Walmart Supercenter in Farmington, your all-occasion connection. That's Walmart Supercenter in Farmington. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Fun first half in our championship game. Central leads North County 38-30. North County had a slim lead at the end of the first frame, but 23 second quarter points for Central as they outscore North County by 10 in that frame, 23-13. And North County is led by Hayden Sprinkles, 10. Adam McGraw has nine, Hunter Johnson with six, Brett Hubbard with three, and then Nathan Davenport with a pair. The Central Rebels get 13 big ones from Jake Bridges as he leads all scores. Connor Proffer with nine, Brandon Wagner has six, Tyler Stewart three, Drew Harlow with four, Holy Mary has a pair, and that rounds it out. All right, let's head uh, toward the half. Greg will have our halftime show for us as we hear from Central champion coach. Josh Mapes, and also uh, Scott Davis. We'll do that in 30 seconds on the boot. The Potosi R3 School District is committed to excellence. Now, they're proud of their students and their athletes because these young people work hard and show a ton of dedication. The Potosi R3 students and athletes are committed to excelling to high levels of achievement. Attitude and perseverance play a big part in their success. The Potosi R3 School District sincerely hopes this school year is a wonderful and memorable stepping stone in their life's journey. Catching up with the head coach of the tournament champion in the girls bracket, coach of the Central Lady Rebels, Coach Mapes, back with us again. And coach, uh, back to back to back now. Well, how do your uh, team feeling after winning three in a row? You know, Fairytown was a good team. I thought we really came out ready to play and played really well in the first quarter. And uh, I was really pleased with our defensive effort. That was one thing that really stuck out. Was not only how strong the zone was, but the rotation of it. And even when you, the personnel rotated, you guys stayed strong with that. You know, I thought our kids came in off the bench and played really well, and uh, our bench is pretty deep. They came in and gave us a lot of positives, I thought. You know, in the 30 years that there's been a girl and a boys bracket, there's never been a situation where the same high school has won back-to-back -back in both the boys and the girls. You guys did your job, so put a little pressure on them now. That's right. It's up to the boys now. We're done. I have to mention the name of Skylar Aminette on fire early on. Is that something that you, you see in practice and kind of see her coming along like that? You know, Skylar's a real hard-working kid. She's put a lot of time into the summer. She shoots a lot. You know, I'm glad she got rewarded tonight with uh, a good game. How much uh, would you say it was at 50-50 kind of relief and excitement when the buzzer sounded? You knew this tournament was yours? You know, it was, I'm excited for our senior kids because they, they've played in this thing three years and they've won it the past three years and they deserve it because they put a lot of time into Kayla McCain, Jensen Uding, Olivia Casey, and uh, Megan Skaggs. You know, I'm glad to see them win this thing their senior year. And Fredericktown was a team that you just got by in the championship. You handled them both of their losses on the season and you played them extremely well. You held Godsey scoreless in the first half. Was that something that you wanted to do was kind of key on her? We knew that, you know, Paige and Annabeth are really great shooters and we couldn't give them any room and, you know, we really concentrated on taking their three-point shot away. How easy is it to kind of, well, I wouldn't say easy, but how many different variations can you run of the same offense with different people in place with having so many shooters? You know, I don't know. We, we turned the ball over way too much. I wasn't pleased with that, but we did run some pretty good offense at times, so. though. So how can you ride the uh, the tidal wave of excitement into 2016 now? You know, I told the kids, be happy for what you've done so far. You know you're 11-0, you've won two uh, tournaments, but come Sunday, it all needs to be pushed to the back because we got a lot of things coming up as far as the conference, conference tournaments, and the real season starts when the district gets here. So that's how you keep them on their toes, you're 0-0 after tonight. I think so. I told them, you know, what we 
you've done in the past is great. Enjoy it the next two days, but come Sunday, it's a new season. Hey, one, there's very few teams that can finish this tournament with a victory, and you do it in the biggest stage that you possibly can. Congrats, Coach. Thank you, guys. We appreciate your coverage. Hey, have a happy new year. All right, thanks. That's head coach of the Central Lady Rebels, Coach Mapes, after winning back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back championships, the Central Lady Rebels put a stamp on 2015. We're back with more up next on J98 The Boot. <laughs> Boyer's Muffler and Auto in Park Hills is family owned and operated, so just like family, they know your dollar counts. When you need good, honest work at a good, honest price, see Moyers Muffler and Auto, and not only for mufflers, but inspections, oil changes, brakes, complete exhaust, new tires, AC work, and more. And now you can take your vehicle for all of its alignment needs. That's Moyers Muffler and Auto at 502 East Main Street in Park Hills, 431-5428. To keep catching up with the coaches from the girls championship game now talking with lady black hats coach scott davis and coach you fall in the championship game it was a one versus two matchup the second loss for your team this year and it comes at the hands of central once again a very difficult challenge there but what did you see in tonight's contest well i, I saw a, a group of girls from park hills that came out and they were on a mission i mean they came out hot and we weren't shooting the ball extremely well at the beginning we came out a little flat and i thought we picked it up in the second half but they're a very talented team and uh Rightfully so, you know, they deserve to be the one seed and, and they outplayed us tonight for the championship. One thing that you can't defend or do anything of is the hot shooting and it seemed like they were knocking down shots early on and there might have been a little bit of a lid on the basket for your two leading scorers. Yeah, I mean, we, our, our girls were shooting a little tight early. I think that's a little bit of nerves, you know. Uh, it's a big crowd, electric atmosphere and, you know, I, I talked to them about coming out loose and, and just playing hard and not being uptight, but, you know, they're teenagers and, you know, they'll come out and do that, but I thought we loosened up a little bit, started shooting better, but, you know, if we have any of those shots fall and take care of the ball a little bit better in the first half, I think, the, you know, the score's a lot better. Yeah, especially when you have to go up against the zone defense like they run, you need those outside shots to fall to stretch that defense out, because you were getting the dribble drives, just the kickout shots weren't falling. Right, we had some open shots, and that's what I told them at halftime. I said, you take away six or eight points you gave up on fast break layups the first two minutes of the game, and you have two or three shots shots fall. That's a difference of 12 to 14 points, ladies. I said, you take that off the scoreboard and you're, you're right there and, you know, in fighting range. But, uh, you know, it's a learning curve. It's a learning lesson. I'm proud of the girls. They earned a spot in the game and we're going to have to build on this for conference play and districts. If you would have thought at, at the end of the game that you held Skaggs to just 10 points, you would have felt pretty good about your chances. But Skylar Aminette just seemed like she was doing anything she could to balance that out. It's kind of, deal. how do you deal with something like that? Well, they have a lot of weapons. If you take away Skaggs and, you know, Olivia can go off and Aminette can go off, so it's pick your poison. You know, you just do the best you can and and uh, they did have the hot hand early and then it's, you know, it's their home floor and, you know, big home crowd and, and that's just something that we had to adjust to and, you know, like I said, I think once we shook, uh, shook the nerves off, I thought that our girls played better. Scott Davis joining us uh, right there on our halftime show. We've started the second half. Jake Bridges starts it out with a runner in the middle of the lane, and it's a 10-point lead for Central. 40-30. to 30. The Central Rebels on top. 7-31 now remaining in the third quarter. And the good news for North County is they're able to get Hunter Johnson back on the floor. He had to sit with two personals very early on in this game after hitting two quick threes. North County gets it down underneath to Brett Spradling. He tries to do an up and under, and he's fouled by Drew Harlow. And with Johnson back on the floor now, that's just another shooter outside for North County that you have to co cover up at all times. I know you think if you haven't seen him play, you say, oh, they get the 6'3", 250-pounder back, so that'll anchor in the middle. Uh, you're right, it's another shooter. Right, it's what another that shooter. Brett Spradling misses the free throw. He's over three today. Averages eight and a half points per game. Doesn't have a score yet tonight. He rattles that one home, though, so that becomes his first. 7.20 remaining in the third quarter. Just starting the second half. Boys championship game right here on J98. Third place game already happens. On the boys' side, Farmington won that one. Tyler Stewart. Goes up and under 
for a bucket. He's got 15. And the largest lead of the game now for Central, 42 to 31. A steal and Central flowing it the other way once again. Wagner pulls up, 10-footer, Silk. Boy, I think North County's got to get a timeout here. 44-31. Central just kind of rolling to start this second half. North County breaks the timeline here. McGraw covers up the ball. Winds it back out to Sprinkle. Sprinkle calling out the play. Goes to McGraw over to the left wing. That's Johnson. Pump pick on the three. Driving now. Johnson goes high off the window. Couldn't hit it. Spradling has the rebound. Back to McGraw. McGraw couldn't lip it in. And then a travel against Harlow. Harlow thought he got knocked down by McGraw. Maybe, maybe not, huh? <laughs> 620 remaining in the third. 44 31. Central's taking command here. You know this North County team, they can get on a roll. Right wing, Brett Hubbard. He can shoot the three, and he can make the three. Bang, bang for Hubbard. He's got six. 44-34. North County trying to reel in these rebels. It'll be hard to do. Right wing to the right baseline, to the right elbow, Stewart. A fade from 15. Wouldn't go. McGraw has the rebound. Tosses to Sprinkle. Sprinkle puts on the brakes and flips it over to the right wing, Hubbard. He just hit that three. Now here's McGraw, fires Johnson. Johnson's triple, yes sir! Hunter Johnson, just like Greg told us. The kid can fill it up. He's got nine. And a 13 point lead is chopped down to seven. 44-37. Bridges with a triple. This one's short. Battle for the board, it's won by Harlow. Harlow. Stomps his way inside, a tie-up, and it's North County ball. A couple of big possessions right there, a couple of threes. You get right back into it. The tie-up gives you the ball back. Here they come. Here they come indeed. They've got the ball back now. Sprinkle has it, crossing the timeline, dances across the half or the uh, far sideline. Jimmy Palmer says, did he get nudged out? They say no. And so it goes back over to Central. No score in the uh, other national semifinal in college football. Michigan State, Alabama tied zeros. Eight minutes left first half. Out of the circle, this is Proffert. Proffert leaves it to Stewart in the left corner. Stewart works to Bridges. Bridges trying to drive it against a double team. Tough shot, couldn't hit it. And Johnson, a powerful rebound. Here's Sprinkle now. Two players watching him. Johnson calls for it. Instead, right wing, it's Hubbard. Hubbard, jab step. Bounces to McGraw. Right elbow. 15-footer. That's silky. He's on it tonight. 11 points for McGraw. Inside, outside, mid-range. He's knocking down everything. It's been eight straight for North County. 44-39. They trail by 13. But in two minutes and 10 seconds, they've chopped it down to five. Is that Spradling's third? You're right, Greg. It is. Central ball, foul on Spradling. 432 left, third quarter. Central got it. Bridges wide, open three, left is short. And there's Spradling chasing down another rebound. Such an effort guy for this team. In the backcourt, Sprinkle. Sprinkle trying to break the pressure, does so. Fires to McGraw. McGraw drives his way inside. Floats, fires, couldn't hit it, got the rebound, stuck it back in. 10 straight for North County. 44, 41, it's a one possession game. Central leads, they've got the hoop. Here's Proffer, working to the right corner. Wagner with it. Wagner trying to slash in. Goes up against Sprinkle. Sprinkle defended him very well. Tough shot, wouldn't go. Rebound Johnson and Sprinkle comes across. They could tie it with a three. 10 in a row by North County. They trailed it by 13. To the right corner, Sprinkle pump fake on the three. Forces up a covered three, and it was blocked by Bridges. Loose ball taken away by Central. So Bridges, 5'10", with a blocked shot. His second one of the year. Down to the left corner, it's Proffer. Proffer driving along that baseline. They'll spin it back out to Wagner. Triple in the air. Off the right side, wouldn't go. And Johnson with another big board. Sprinkle, drilling it across the timeline. He's got his heels nearly at half court. 
and works to McGraw, out of Johnson. Sprinkle going to go down to that left corner, curl around the screen from Johnson. Uh oh, just couldn't handle the pass from McGraw. Wagner's on the run now. Pushes to the left corner, Bridges driving in along the baseline. Wraps it around, just about had the reverse layup, but he is fouled and he'll go to the line. Will it be Spradling again? I think they're going to catch oh. McGraw. Yeah, they put 44 on the board. There is no 44. I think it's McGraw, though. That'd be his second. The free throw by Bridges rattles home. He's got 16. Good push by North County. The down 13. They come up with 10 straight. The game, the game was going to go one of two ways from there. Central was either going to start to put them away or North County was going to stand up and fight, and they did that. And Bridges hits both free throws. He's got 17. Nice game for Jake. 46-41, a five-point lead for Central. Full court pressure by the Rebels. Timeline broken with a bounce pass to Johnson on the right wing. Johnson slamming his way in along that right baseline. Ooh, they're going to call him with the charge. That's a, that's a tough call. And that was the IOU for Harlow's travel earlier is what that was. It's a tough call. That's the third on Johnson. That was the sorry card. Not saying, not saying it was a bad call. It was just a tough call. <laughs> those are those are hard calls to make, those block charges. You will not be fined by the MAAA conference for that. You don't know that. 46-41. <laughs> it's a five-point lead for Central. Johnson going to go back to the bench. He could probably use a rest anyway. He's got three personals. I thought he'd played really well in the second half, Greg. He hit a three. He's come up with several big rebounds. Right. That's the thing that stood out beyond the outside shooting is the ability to pull down rebounds. Central's got the pumpkin. They've got the lead, 46 to 41. And Bridges barks out the play as he comes across the half-court strike. Jake, two-handed chest pass. Stewart, they look to the left corner now. Dribble weave handoff. That's to Wagner. Wagner's outside of the arc. Nice job by Hubbard to track him down. And now it's Harlow, head of the circle. Drive to the left corner. Wagner scoops it underneath Bridges. Bridges drives. Kicks to the right wing. That's Proffer. Good work by this 3-2 zone to cover everything so far. Head of the circle, Stewart. Stewart, left-handed, dribble weave handoff. Wagner, he's got it on the left wing, turned it over. Threw it right to Sprinkle. 2.05 remaining in the third. 46-41 Central. Right corner, Hubbard. Hubbard stepped out away from the defense and then airmailed a triple. Rebound down to Central. Bridges is on the run. Jake puts it in second, shifts, drives it, missed the runner. But the rebound, Harlow, and he stuck it back in. Drew has a half a dozen. The lead swells to seven. Hubbard caught in the trap of the backcourt and a timeout by Jimmy Palmer. Third time he's used the timeout with his team trouble in the backcourt. And I think it's been the right call every time. It was the same story last night against West County. The West County three-quarter court pressure. They couldn't get into the front court. Changed the offense. A couple of timeouts later, they started to get rhythm. Will they do that now? Let's see. 141 remaining in the third. 48-41 Central leads back in 30 seconds on J9EA. When you're ready for a great home-style meal, visit Cafe Genevieve on Highway 61 near the St. Gen Hospital in St. Genevieve. Join them for delicious family-style meals from fried chicken to hand cut steaks, prime rib, and much more. That's Cafe Genevieve. Cafe Genevieve is very appreciative and thankful for family, friends, and patrons that support their business. So quit thinking about a great meal. Go get it. Take the short drive to Cafe Genevieve, Highway 61 in St. Jen. Remaining in our third quarter, Central on the rail by four. North County trailed by 13 at one point, but 10 straight points for them. They reeled Central in a little bit, but Central pushes away. 141 remaining in the third. Sprinkle running here for North County. It's going to be watched right there by Wagner. Sprinkle trying to break him down off the dribble, drives it right baseline, pulls the dribble up, ducks under the defense, can't hit the shot. Carolyn grabs the rebound, got it back to Sprinkle, and Sprinkle's thumped down to the ground. 
He'll go to the free throw line for two. Great play that time, though, by Chase Carolyn to get the ball back. Yeah, it was an aggressive offensive rebound up in traffic. And they need that as much as they can the rest of the way. Third foul on Harlow. To the free throw line, Sprinkle. Sprinkle hit two free throws last night to win the game with under a second left as North County got by West County 63 to 61. Sprinkle shoots not over 90% for the foul line. And he gets his first second half point right there. He's got 11 now. Average is 19.2. And a very smart player runs the offense and it seems like, I mean, the offense goes the way he goes. It does sometimes, which usually means pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> 75 seconds left in the third, a five-point game. Central leads 48-43. Three guards out front playing catch. Proffer's got it now. Proffer with a left hand. Spins around now. Hubbard watching him on the left wing. To the head of the circle, it's Stewart. Stewart, a little bounce to his step. Sprinkle wet for the steal. Pulled it away from him there. Under a minute to go third quarter. 48-43. A five-point advantage for the Rebels. Bridges chips inside, kicks it out. Stewart, triple in the air. Bang! Tyler Stewart's got his first three. Big eight shot. points for the game. It sure was. It makes it an eight-point stretch. 51-43. 35 seconds remaining in the third. And a foul on Central as Chase Carolyn found his way to the hole. Two shots upcoming for Chase. Hey, you can thank McGraw for these two shots. McGraw, nice feed from block to block and had the defender already in the air. He's a good passer, especially He's just high good low. Inside, yeah. The foul went on Wagner. That's his third. And to the line, Chase Carolyn averages a point and a half again. Oh. <laughs> that thing just rested on the rim and found its way off. It was like the old Pepsi commercial. Somebody needed to open the can for him. Yeah. <laughs> So Carolyn will have another try. Trying to cut it to seven. He got this one. That was perfect. So good work by Carolyn. One for two. 51-44, a seven-point advantage for Central. They've got the basketball. 3-2 zone by the Raiders. And Central looks like they want to hold for the final shot of the third. 20 seconds left. Here's Jake Bridges with it. Bridges, crossover dribble, crossover dribble, hands it off to Proffer. Proffer between the circles. Proffer with the left hand, launches over the defense, misses the three, and the rebound scrapped away by Carolyn. And a foul whistled on North County. It was on Davenport, well away, well away from the basketball. So that gives Central a chance with 2.6 seconds left to launch nothing before the end of the third. They fire it in. Bridges has it. One dribble, splits a double team, and couldn't quite put it in. So we've come to the end of the third, and Central leads 51-44. Eight minutes of regulation left. We'll tell you about it after this one-minute pause on the boot. At Dietrich Mother's Head Funeral Home in DeSoto, the caring staff believes in providing value and trust. Every family deserves a perfect and final tribute, but making decisions in a trying time isn't easy. Alleviate that burden from your family with a prearranged funeral plan. The compassionate staff will sit down with you, discuss your needs, and listen to your concerns. Dietrich Mother's Head Funeral Home, 220 North Main in DeSoto. Soto, there for you in your time of need. Been in a little trouble and need a little extra help? Norman Crumpecker, bail bond agent from Potosi, can help. Norman Crumpecker has an answering service and is available 24 7. You'll get fast service, be out and on your way. Guaranteed. Call 573 436 9301 or 631 8161 anytime, day or night. Crumpecker. He can set you free. That's Bail Bond Agent Norman Crumpecker from Potosi. The Potosi R3 School District is committed to excellence. Now they're proud of their students and their athletes because these young people work hard and show a ton of dedication. 
The Potosi R3 students and athletes are committed to excelling to high levels of achievement. Attitude and perseverance play a big part in their success. The Potosi R3 School District sincerely hopes this school year is a wonderful and memorable stepping stone in their life's journey. Comes down to three as we start the fourth quarter of play in the championship games here at Central High School. It's a 54-44 lead for the Rebels, so a lot of heavy lifting left for this North County team to do. Sprinkle throws a wild shot up from the right baseline that won't fall. And now Jake's headed the other way. Puts the brakes on in the right corner, going to work it back outside. And now he's going to launch another three. Misses that one. But good work on the rebound by Mayberry, and Mayberry muscled it in. Holden's got four points. That's his first field goal. And 56 to 44. Central on top by 12. Largest lead has been 14. Johnson crosses the timeline. Gets over to the right wing, hands it off to Hubbard there. He curls it over to Sprinkle. Sprinkle on the right wing. Jimmy Call Palmer calling out. Clay Fist. 56 to 44, a 12 point lead for Central and a timeout by North County. So 618 remaining in the fourth. Let's take just a 30 second break on the boot. Richie and Angie Warren at RNA Logging and Sawmill LLC in Annapolis is proud of their community and they proudly support events in the community they serve. RNA Logging and Sawmill in Annapolis is now buying standing timber and they cut to your specifications. You heard right. They are now buying standing timber and they cut to your specifications. That's RNA Logging LLC in Annapolis. For more information, call 573-598-3926. Six, 44, 12 point advantage for the Central Rebels. North County's gonna have to figure some of that things out here in the final six minutes of regulation. Or it'll be a back to back sweep of this tournament by the Central Rebels. Sprinkle, double teamed out at half court, trying to dribble, dribble around that traffic. He's fouled. That was Stewart, and that's his third. 6 3 remaining in the fourth quarter. 56 to 44 the score in about three and a half hours remaining in 2015. Spinkle grabs it right near half court. Puts the dribble down, fires it underneath to Johnson, who finishes, Ooh. and he's going to the line. And before he did all that, I was amazed he caught that pass. That thing was a bullet from about eight feet. It was a laser, Dr. Evil. It was a laser. 56-46. Ten-point lead for Central. Johnson to the line. He's got 11 tonight. Averages 8.8. .8. Even in foul trouble. Mm, misses that one. So still a 10-point advantage for the Rebels. 5.50 on this fourth quarter clock. A bluff on the three by Bridges. They curl it around Wagner. He doesn't bluff. He knocks it down. Brandon Wagner, three triples, nine points. A 50% three-point shooter. Gaudy numbers Ridiculous. there. Ridiculous. And 59 to 46. It's central out front. Hubbard in the left corner. Pump fake on the three. Throws up a runner from the left baseline. Tough shot. Wouldn't go. Proffer sails high for the rebound. 13-point advantage for Central. Largest lead has been 14. Proffer dribbling it out along that right wing to Stewart, head of the circle. Back to Proffer. Proffer from 23. Misses that one. Great job by Mayberry to grab the rebound. But he walked. Mm. Let's thank a few sponsors. Vicki Crocker, Realty in Deloge, Cardinal Auto Body in Bonterre, the Perry County Schools, and H&R Block in Park Hills for sponsoring our coverage of the Central Christmas Tournament. Always a fun time. <laughs> North County's got to stop the bleeding here. They need some kind of response. Sprinkle's got it. He got it 84 feet away from the bucket. Grabbed it right along the baseline. He's in range. <laughs> he is in range, you're right. <laughs> the Sprinkle cradles it back and forth. Now he'll set up on the left wing. Keeps the dribble alive, drives the left baseline, rises up, and a little contact, no call. The ball taken away by Wagner. I think Proffer got a piece of it. 
Now Bridges at the top of the key. Bonnie goes for the steal. Bridges too quick. Bridges curls off of a screen. Two-handed chest pass. Stewart, top of the key. Three-pointer. Dumps it through. Tyler Stewart has two triples. He's got 11 points now. And the margin has been stretched out all the way to 16 points. 62-46. Central starting to take command of this game. Getting a lot of open looks from outside and knocking them down, making the most of it. And these guys can shoot. All of them. Wagner has the best percentage, but I mean, Proffer, Bridges, Wagner, Stewart, they can all fill it up out there. 62-46. Final game of the night. We broadcast four of them. They played a couple on the left side of the bracket, too. You know, a big reason that Central's starting to pull away, too, is Mayberry crashing the glass off the bench. He has done a nice job with that. I agree. McGraw puts it in play. That's to Spradling. And now they go inside, looking for McGraw. He's tied up. Wagner tied him up. The alternate possession keeps it with North County. So North County basketball. It'll be McGraw putting it in play. Right of the bucket along that baseline. Loose ball squirts free back to him. He steps in and scores. Hey, that's a good, I, we should duplicate that play. That's a good play. McGraw with 13. All right, here's what you do. You inbound it. Crash against a couple of defenders. The ball squirts loose. You step in, get it, and score. Right. Draw that on your board there. Foul on Chase Caroline for the Raiders, or for the, uh, yeah, for the, Ra for the Raiders. That's the second. Outside of the arc, Wagner tees it up, knocks it right down the middle of the fairway. Bang, 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 bang. Brandon Wagner's got four triples, 12 points. And this baby's starting to be put to bed. 65-48, a 17-point swell for the Central Rebels. McGraw, hook shot, missed it. Rebound Mayberry again. He's been all over the glass. Mayberry works it over to Bridges. Proffer calling for it. Bridges says, let me dribble over here. And he sets up on the right wing. Now to the head of the circle. That's Stewart. Slashes in. Goes belly to belly. Charge is called. Good work that time by Caroline to take it. That last three by Wagner. Central's so confident from outside. Wagner was already headed back up the floor before it went through the rim. Larry Bird stuff, huh? Yeah, it didn't even take off the warm-ups. 65-48. <laughs> A 17-point advantage for the Central Rebels. Inbound, Central still pressing. Kyle Bonney in the backcourt. Man, he races end to end, flies one up to the hoop. Missed it, rebound McGraw. He'll take care of it. 15 for Adam McGraw, I like that kid's game. Mr. Fundamental tonight. He is. Bridges, fires it over to the left corner. That's to Wagner, Wagner outside to Proffer. Proffer gonna dribble it back outside. Three minutes and five seconds, remaining in the fourth. And it looks like Central is gonna sweep in back-to-back -back years. Still three minutes to go, but the Rebels lead it by 15. Johnson steals it, sets a screen for Sprinkle. Sprinkle tosses up a covered up 25 footer, and it clunks off of Caroline's back and out of bounds. Starting to rush the shots a little bit now. 2.50 on this fourth quarter clock. We'll talk to the coaches after it's all over. Mike Harlow for the Rebels, Jimmy Palmer for the Raiders. Charging call. Whistled against Central. That was Jake. That's his first. Eighth team foul, but charges are player control fouls, so no free throws here. Bonnie bouncing in the backcourt. And he bounces to Caroline on the forecourt. Now to McGraw. McGraw sets up shop on the left wing, back cut to Sprinkle, a little behind and stolen away by Central. Two minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Timeout, Mike Carlo and the Central Rebels. 65-50, Rebels lead the Raiders, and we're back in a minute on J98.
The entire faculty and staff of the South Iron School District would like to take this time to wish the South Iron Panthers the best of luck this season. The Panthers have proven that they have what it takes to be winners both on and off of the court, and everyone at the South Iron School District is very proud of each and every one of you. Again, good luck this basketball season to the South Iron Panthers from the entire faculty and staff at the South Iron School District. Go Panthers! Are you looking for a law firm who has experience and can answer your questions? Hi, I'm Bryce Seacrest, a partner in the law firm of Williams & Seacrest at Park Hills. We're a local firm and we care about our clients. Our firm has experience working with clients in estate planning, bankruptcy, social security, family court, and more. Whatever your legal needs, check us out online at williamsandsecrets.com or call us at 431-5592. That's 431-5592. The choice of an attorney is an important one and should not be based solely on advertising. Sixty-five fifty Central leading North County in this championship game here at the TJ Fulon Fieldhouse. It's the Bob Seacrest Jr. Central Christmas Tournament, 60th playing of this thing and no school has ever swept the tournament in consecutive years. The Central Rebels look like they're going to do that. They're going to run some four corners here after the timeout. So Mike Harlow called that timeout to set this thing up. Proffers got it. Boy, if you have if you want to set up a team with the right personnel to protect a late lead, how about four guards that can handle it and shoot free throws? That's a pretty good option. Now, they really have three guards out there right now because they've got Mayberry and Harlow out there. Bridges slicing down the left side and rims it in. 22 for Jake Bridges. I don't know how he kept his balance going through the lane. If you add the number on the front of his shirt with the number on the back of his shirt, that's how many points he has. And what did he finish with, 12 last night? Yep, 12 last night, but 24 the night before in the quarterfinal. A turnover by North County and just a minute and a half remaining. And Central has matched its largest lead now of 17 points. And they've got the basketball. Now with a minute 26 on the clock. As Coach Jimmy Palmer goes to his bench and he'll put in Nathan Davenport. Ethan Gomez getting his first run. Gomez a 5'10 junior, and with all the subs, he wants to provide a little instruction as well. So a quick timeout, 126 remaining in our ball game, 67 to 50. Just keep it right here. The National Football College oh. semifinals underway tonight at the Orange Bowl. It was Clemson defeating Oklahoma soundly. And right now on the other national semifinal, Alabama just took a two-score lead over Michigan State. Ten to nothing, Bama, a minute 25. Ten to zero, Death Star. Uh, <laughs> a minute 25 remaining in the first half there. 67-50. Central lead, central ball. And as much drama as we've had throughout this tournament, in a way, a little bit too bad that it doesn't end the same way. Of course, if you're a Rebel fan, you don't think that at all. <laughs> They're your team. And Central's got the basketball. Matt Richardson's out there, along with Wade Scherfitz. Bridges remains on the floor, along with Kobe Wright, who just checked in. Long three from Scherfitz. Holy smokes! Ring it up for Wade Scherfitz. And there's an exclamation point on tonight's game. 70 to 50. A 20-point lead for the Central Rebels. The basket's just bigger on their end tonight. And the Farmington Knights have to be going, doggone it, if we'd have made another shot, maybe this would have been us. They lost by only three to the Rebels last night. Seventy to fifty. We're under a minute to go. And North County has the basketball as they've put a few more players in the ball game as well. Turnaround jumper off the window that won't fall for Caroline. Rebound ripped down by Harlow. Let's see if the Rebels will just try to put this thing in their back pocket. Little dribbling exhibition on the right wing surface. He throws it into the fifth row on the near sideline. 
Then he pats his, then he pats his chest to, as if to say, my, my fault, bad. as if someone didn't know. <laughs> uh, 70 to 50. Only one more line to fill in, and you can go ahead and fill it in. The Central Rebel, Rebels uh, going to be victorious tonight. So they just have to check on the final score with one more shot up and in by Kyle Bonney. Nice look at Hoop by Kyle right there. Ten seconds remaining. Central back-to-back -back tournament champs at the Bob Seacrest Jr. Central Christmas Tournament. Both the boys and the girls. Final score, 70-52. Rebels win it. Your post-game show in two minutes on J98. Toyota Thon, Toyota Thon, Toyota Thon rocks with great big deals on a new set of wheels. Camry, Prius, Rav4 2, with 0% financing for you. The holidays are back, and so is Toyota Thon. Wrap up a great year with amazing deals on a huge selection of brand new Toyotas. From now until January 4th, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2015 Rav4. Learn more at buyatoyota.com. Hurry and don't delay, we'll see you here. It all ends January 4th. It's our biggest and bestest event of the year. That's why Toyota's on run. Toyota, let's go places. APR and approved credit from Toyota Financial Services. Call 1-800-79-TOYOTA for details. Offers may vary by region. See participating dealer for details. Offers end 1-4-16. Hi, this is John Popel. Get top dollar for your trade-in and special pricing on all Toyota models. Twin City Toyota at I-55 in the Herculaneum Auto Mall exit. Hi, this is State Representative Paul Fitzwater. I would like to wish the best of luck to all the teams in the Central Christmas Tournament. Play hard, athletes, and keep your head in the game. And remember, teamwork will take you to the winning score. I would also like to take this time to wish family, friends, and acquaintances Merry Christmas from the Fitzwater family. This is State Representative Paul Fitzwater wishing you and yours health and happiness in the upcoming year. If an unfortunate accident happens, don't settle for just anyone to put your vehicle back into shape. Trust the professionals at Kernan Auto Body in Bonterre. Not only does Kernan Auto Body offer years of experience and accepts only perfection when it comes to their work, but customer service and convenience are also top priorities for their customers. Kernan Auto Body now offers windshield repair for chips and cracks. And as always, Kernan Auto Body in Bonterre accepts MasterCard and Visa. Call them today, 573-358-7300. Congratulations to the Central Rebels, both the Lady Rebels and the Rebels. Central girls uh, win in uh, non-dramatic fashion in their championship game. 59-35 over Fredericktown, and the Central boys do the same. 70-52 to over North County in their championship win. Let's go ahead and go over the scoring in this one now. The Raiders are led by Adam McGraw tonight with 15. He had a great tournament. 21, 26, 15, and 15. Solid stuff from McGraw. Sprinkle also in double figures the entire tournament, but his low point output was tonight with 12. Hunter Johnson, I thought Greg played really well, and he played in foul trouble. He scored 11, but he was a good force for him underneath, too, especially rebound basketball. Yeah, when Central had that early push, it was really him on the offensive and defensive glass that helped bring North County back into it. Unfortunately, the tables kind of turned later in the game. Brett Spradling had a point. Kyle Bonney with two, two for an eighth in Davenport. Brett Hubbard had six, and Chase Caroline with a point. Central went up 13 points. And that was at the 6.43 mark of the third quarter, 44-31. It was a 10-0 push by North County to make it a one-possession game, 44-41. And, and then at that point, Central just uh, raced back out again, built the lead, and then just never did allow North County to get back into it. Let's go ahead and recap your Rebel scorers tonight. Drew Harlow contributed six. Holden Mayberry had four. Wade Scherfus knocked down a late three. And then the four guards, all in double figures. Tyler Stewart at 11, 12 for Brandon Wagner. Connor Proper with 10. Jake Bridges at 22. I think I like Jake as uh, our player of the game. What do you think? 
Yeah, he responded to uh, a North County crowd that was on him from start to finish. Sure. And every time the crowd started to get on him, he just knocked down another big shot. Like he played better, huh? So Bridges scores 22. He does most of the ball handling. I thought he threw some nice passes tonight as well. He gets our Unico Bank player of the game. Unico Bank cares about you like family, a car, home, or commercial loan. See Unico Bank. Unico Bank, banking with people like you. Well, we'll talk to the coaches coming up on our post-game show. We'll hang out and see if Jimmy Palmer and Mike Harlow will come up and give us their thoughts on the action tonight, tournament as a whole. Uh, we'll also do a bracket breakdown for you, and depending upon when the coaches uh, are able to come up and talk to us, we'll either do that before or after we talk to them. But let's go ahead and step aside for two minutes. More of your post-game show from the TJ Fulon Fieldhouse after this. Safe Harbor Hospice, a tradition of trust and care. Safe Harbor has been one of the better things in my life. I've dealt with it through my parents. And they were very pleased. I was very pleased. It made things so much easier and so much better for everybody to have that understanding of what the last steps in life really were made of. That's Randall Hatridge of Bellevue. Safe Harbor Hospice. Ask for us by name. 877-404-7478. West St. Francis County School District is proud of the area they serve. They're very supportive of the community and will continue this support for years to come. They know a strong community is a good community to live in, and they proudly support the area's fine students. They understand the hard work and dedication it takes to be successful. The West St. Francis County School District takes this opportunity to congratulate all the athletes in the Central Christmas Tournament. Vicki Crocker with Vicki Crocker Realty is proud to serve St. Francis and surrounding counties and is dedicated to serving all your real estate needs. Vicki Crocker is friendly, knowledgeable, and professional. Vicki Crocker Realty can provide you with up-to-date listings, including foreclosures, as well as information to sell your home in today's market. So call Vicki Crocker Realty today at 747-8099 or stop by her office in Deloge in the Green Tree Shopping Center. That's Vicki Crocker Realty. Good old Dwight Harrington of Leadbell Pump and Supply has been serving the St. Francis and surrounding counties for several decades. Leadbell Pump and Supply can provide you with free estimates on well drilling and pump installation right now. They also do repairs and service work and provide trenching and electric services. So for your entire pump supply needs and more, it's Leadbell Pump and Supply, East Elvin Street in Park Hills. Call 431-2476. Give you a bracket breakdown uh, of the tournaments here at the Central Christmas Tournament. Uh, Coach Palmer talking to his club following this loss, and well, Coach Harlow enjoying the spoils of victory as they set up the ladder to cut down the Christmas tournament nets here at the TJ Fulon Fieldhouse. We're hoping to be joined by both of them on the post-game show here today. Well, let's go ahead and tell you what happened in this tournament today. As we recap the day, the uh, DeSoto girls defeated uh, Arcadia Valley 53-37. to And they claim the backside of the bracket, the consolation final. Third place on the girls' bracket goes to St. Genevieve. That was probably our game of the day, Greg. Oh, absolutely. Uh, St. Gen trailed in that ball game by 19 points oh. early in the third quarter. And they ended up beating the buzzer and beating Potosi 61-60. On a three-pointer. That was tipped. That was tipped. <laughs> <laughs> what a victory for them. All right, so the consolation side of the boys' bracket goes to Potosi. The Trojans defeating St. Genevieve 64-55. to Hillsborough beats Festus for fifth place, 67-60. to In the third-place game, Farmington gets by West County, 64-57. to and in the boys' title game tonight, the Central Rebels, a winner over North County, 72-52. Well, we will do our best to bring you the coaches on our post-game show. Going to step aside one more time and see if they'll come up and join us on the post-game. We'll be back right after this on J98. Are you looking for a law firm who has experience and can answer your questions? Hi, I'm Bryce Seacrest, a partner in the law firm of Williams & Seacrest at Park Hills. We're a local firm and we care about our clients. 
Our firm has experience working with clients in estate planning, bankruptcy, social security, family court, and more. Whatever your legal needs, check us out online at williamsandsecrets.com or call us at 431-5592. That's 431-5592. The choice of an attorney is an important one and should not be based solely on advertising. Hello? Hi, Eric. This is Terry from Farmers Insurance. Any changes regarding your home or car? Well, I started carpooling with some friends from work. No problem. With the extra people in the car, we want you to stay safe. So let me update your liability limits. Perfect. Until you close the gaps in your insurance, you could be living dangerously. We'll help you know the gaps and lose all those. We are farmers. See your farmer's insurance agent, Lance Mayfield, in Viburnum for all your insurance needs. That's Lance Mayfield in Viburnum. There's no place like home, but when age or illness turns home from a place of happiness into one of loneliness, it may be time to consider a health care facility. Whether your need is short-term rehabilitation or long-term care, St. Genevieve Care Center offers high-quality medical care complemented by a dedicated staff who offer warmth, wisdom, and the experience of caring, which makes their facility the next best thing to being home. Dignity, respect, care. St. Genevieve Care Center, 1010 St. Gen Drive in St. Genevieve. Medicaid, Medicare, private pay, private insurance, and hospice accepted. The staff, students, and faculty of the Iron County C4 Schools in Viburnum would like to take this opportunity to wish the Viburnum Blue Jays the best of luck this basketball season. The Iron County C4 Schools are proud of the players and coaches of Blue Jays basketball. You all give countless hours of hard work and dedication. Good luck to the Viburnum Blue Jays from everyone at the Iron County C4 School District in Viburnum. You're all great players, great people, and you know how to get the job done right. Go Blue Jays! Richie and Angie Warren at RNA Logging and Sawmill LLC in Annapolis is proud of their community and they proudly support events in the community they serve. RNA Logging and Sawmill in Annapolis is now buying standing timber and they cut to your specifications. You heard right. They are now buying standing timber and they cut to your specifications. That's RNA Logging LLC in Annapolis. For more information, call 573 598 3926. way uh, close to us. We'll uh, have a chance to talk to him coming up here in just a few mim- minutes. Did I say minutes? Mimits. Mimits. Trademark that. Minutes. Uh, either way. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Call- Palmer comes our way. We hope he does. We'll get him on our postgame show as well. North County falls to 8-4. and four. The Central Rebels now 10-0 and 0 on the season. An unblemished 2015 portion of their schedule. Let's go ahead and thank some of the folks that uh, allowed us to bring you the Central Christmas Tournament. Our Web TV sponsors tonight, H&R Block in Park Hills and also Sam, Sism, Ford, and Lincoln in Farmington. Thank you. Representative Paul Fitzwater, uh, well, he refereed and he also sponsored our coverage. So thank you to him. We would like to thank Dietrich's Mothershed Funeral Home in DeSoto. Uh, several school districts that uh, wish their team good luck and congratulations and supported our coverage. The uh, West uh, County Schools, the Iron County Schools, Potosi Schools also supporting our coverage, uh, the Perry County School District and the South Iron Schools. Thank you for supporting our coverage of the tournaments here. Those and many, many more. All right, as we await for the coaches, we told you who won the final games of this tournament, but there were some real thrillers along the way in this thing. To me, West County, they're kind of the, the team that has the most drama every single night out. They win in double overtime in the very first round. They defeated St. Genevieve 79-74, and then they pump in a three-pointer with five seconds on the clock in the second round to vanquish the second-seeded Festus Ball Club, beat him 73-72, and then they fall by just a couple of points in the uh, semifinal round in North County, 63-61, to and Farmington ends up uh, defeating West County for third place, but uh, they always have to Terrific ball games. Herculaneum beat South Iron by a point, 48 to 47, in a terrific ball game. Another great game. North County topped Perryville, 63 to 62. So, so many great games at this tournament this year, and we've had a lot of fun bringing them to you. Looks like Jimmy Palmer is headed our way, so we'll fit him with a headset, and then we'll also uh, talk with uh, Mike Harlow as we move along on our post-game show. And Coach Palmer's uh, guys, well, he hung, they hung with him for a long time, and then Central finally created a gap 
right at the end. 70 to 52, the final score, and Central wins it. I know uh, a tough feeling tonight for Coach Palmer and the troops. Certainly, I, I would think disappointment in losing, but a terrific tournament by your players, Coach. Uh, you got to be real proud of them. Oh, absolutely. That's what I told the guys uh, <clears throat> in the locker room. I tried to be as, as positive as possible uh, af after a game like that, an emotional game. Uh, you know, I told them the two years I've been there, last year and this year, we're 6-2 and two in the Christmas tournament as a unit. Not, not a whole lot of teams can say that, uh, to go 3-1 and one each year. And, you know, we did a heck of a job this year just to just to even get to this game. A couple of close games we battled, uh, all four games of the tournament, and uh, we fought to the end. So, you know, I felt like we gave them a, a, a good scare in the first half. Uh, we had a technical call on us. I didn't exactly see the play. Um, said one of our guys shoved him in the chest. But from that point on, it kind of turned. They had a couple of big threes right before the half. Uh, and, you know, we just – they took all the momentum and, the, and they came back out with it in the second half. They did, but they got up on you 14 in the second half, a little bit more than a minute into the second half. But your guys – maybe you might have had your best stretch right there. You scored 10 straight, and it looked like game was going to be on at that point. That was a real nice segment for your guys. Yeah, it was. It was. But, you know, they, they called a uh, – Coach Harlow did a good job of calling a timeout and, uh, you know, getting his guys back together. They uh, they can really apply some pressure when they want to. Um, they kind of pushed our offense out towards the half court line, and that's what we emphasized before the game that we can't let them do. And we did a good job for about three and a half quarters of it. But that last four minute stretch, five minute stretch of the fourth quarter, uh, they really got after it. And, you know, our, our guys didn't respond. But, you know, look, these guys have been here before, been there, done that. Uh, we haven't. So hopefully we can grow from this experience. Uh, heck of a game for us uh, to play in, to be here. So with, with that, I, I'm proud of our team. A lot of fun to see your team. Congratulations, Coach, on a great tournament run. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. We appreciate that. Jimmy Palmer joining us uh, on our post game here after the final at the Central Christmas Tournament. And we'll have a chat with Mike Harlow on our post game show as well as uh, Coach comes over while uh, some of the players start to cut down the nets. Uh, you're, you, you guys took the drama out of it. You probably you probably liked that, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, it, it it the drama didn't get taken out. It wasn't for me. I didn't never thought the drama was out, but. Luckily, we were able to uh, get some stops on defense and hit some big shots in the fourth quarter. And I, I thought once we picked up our defensive intensity in the fourth quarter and that man-to-man, -man, I thought that was the difference. Coach Palmer remarks about the same way. He said that your defense forced them to start their offense farther away from the basket. He thought that was important. It, it was important. I mean, you can't let teams who have really good shooters come down and run screens and and get their shooters open and and knock threes down on you, which they did for a stretch when we took that 12 or 13 point lead. Yeah. We stayed in that zone a little too long uh, and let them hit a few shots. And uh, once we went to man to man, we pushed our offense further and further away and we uh, really face guard Hayden Sprinkle and Connor Proffer. Man, he did a great job on him the fourth quarter. Didn't let him get anything, didn't let him breathe. We had some other guys switching it on and off on him. I, I, I was proud of our defensive effort and, and we want to be known as a great defensive team. I, we know we can shoot. We know we can score. We want to defend. I thought you did. I, and you mentioned the segment. You go up 14. They hit a few shots, a 10-0 run, three-point game. And that was kind of, okay, is it going to be a game or is Central going to push away? The rest of the entire way, you score 26 and allowed only nine. So yeah. that's exactly what you did. Well, and we had that timeout, I think, and, and we talked about if we're going to win, it's going to be on the defensive end. we got to pick up the – got to get stops. We gotta get the shooters. We gotta get stops. We gotta come down. We gotta be smart. And uh, you know, Brandon Wagner, Jake Bridges, some of our guys hit some really big shots. And then, you know, uh, man, Holden Mayberry, a sophomore, come in and got some big rebounds. Man, he, he played really well. First time he's ever played in a Christmas tournament and has had very little varsity experience. Huh. I thought Jake was really good in this tournament. Uh, and tonight, 22 did uh, most of your ball handling. Pass the ball well. Uh, that's what your senior lead guard should do for yeah, you. He's right? our leader. I mean, he's our leader. He's he what he's what makes us go. Uh, you know, he he's a great player. I mean, he, I've had him since the first grade, so I know what he can do, and I've seen him grow and mature. Uh, 
into a really fine student athlete uh, who is having a great year so far. Unblemished in 2015. That's pretty fun. Well, we're just trying to keep up with the girls. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so far for a while we've been the second best team in the in the school here. Uh, our girls are really good, and congratulations to Coach Mapes, Mapes and his staff and the girls because, man, they make it look easy. Just uh, don't challenge them to a yeah, scrimmage. Yeah, we, we have a little more of a struggle than they do, but uh, uh, I'm happy for them and I'm happy for our kids and you know. It's a big, big tournament win. For the first time ever, you probably know this, a team has now swept in consecutive years. Yeah. So that's pretty good stuff. Well, yeah, it's it's really fun. And, uh, you know, that, our kids will look back and they don't realize it now, but they'll see how special it is. And, you know, to win this tournament, man, I mean, 16 – Team tournament. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of great teams. Very team. Very few teams ever won even back to back. Or now we have won three in four years. Been very fortunate to do that. That's only happened once. Three out of four years. That was back in the fifties with Washington, Missouri. I looked it up. So something they can be proud of and look back on and and winning the gold ball. Uh, big for our team, our community, our town, and our fans. So it, it's special. Thanks for your time. Well, I appreciate you having us, and thanks for your coverage, man. Happy New Year. You too, buddy. Mike Have Garner, a good one. You betcha. Mike Carlo joining us on the post-game show. Appreciate him. Always uh, enjoy uh, Mike Carlo's time. Very gracious uh, uh, in his time, and, and uh, always enjoy his thoughts as well. So, 70-52, to 52, our final score for the final time in the final game of 2015. Man, we had a cast of characters tonight. Aaron Hargis helped us out running our video. Evan Thurman back in the studio, the man behind the curtain. And uh, Greg Armbruster pitching in tonight, calling the, uh, the girls' championship game for us and uh, helping out with some color commentary. Great work by Greg as well. I'm Chad Speaker, and uh, a happy new year to you guys tonight. I hope your home team did well today for the final time in 2015. Now I'm going to go join mine. <laughs> They're going to hold for the final shot of the half. We're down to five seconds to play. Inside out they go. Casey for three. You know it. Lady Rebels stretch it out right before the break. Buzzer sounds. Central with a 14-point lead at 29-15. Three, two, one. The Central Lady Rebels have done it. They've won their first ever state championship game, and they do it in dominating fashion over Cardinal Ritter, 55 to 19. Clark, who's been on fire, the three, bang, and Missouri extends it on the West Clark three. Just in front of the 10-foot line, Jackie Versman pounds it. A Clark holds that 